Out of everything we have experienced thus far in Don't Starve Together's newest beta, A Host of Horrors, these are the two mechanics that I highly suspect to change pretty damn dramatically. But what are we here for beyond a couple of old geezers beard? Oh, you know, hidden world events, incredible armor pieces, infinite light, and then some everyone. So no biggie, am I right? But the processes to reach everything we have just seen are a big deal, so we best respect them. Our first stop is down under following an ancient fuel weaver kill and everything that comes before such a thing, as we need a special offering to the beckoning hand before the adventure begins. An adventure that will include a brief cameo from the Queen of Nightmares herself, plus the Shadow Rifts five days later, mind. That said, this side of the content today actually has two alternative solutions. Adjusting the rift settings will generate cave rifts immediately, meaning resting horrors will be right around the corner if you can make it down to the ruins swiftly enough for the replica chair blueprints that will come in handy in a moment, but do not forget the original relic combinations either. Either way, the final destination is the same, as once you can craft a chair, you best make one for our resident granny, as it will not only give you a friendship point with her, meaning we actually have a whole new task for her quest, but also a blueprint for the Sawhorse crafting station. And here's where the first half of our fun truly begins, with nine new decor crafts, all of which are pretty damn cheap as you can see. But yes, they are exactly that. Decorations for base builders, chairs, tables, artwork, frames that we can write on, and then some, but do enjoy the new mechanic of emotes while we sit at the end of the day, and note that the camera angles matters when placing things right now, as the fencing sword doesn't do diddly for any of this. But it is that then some I mentioned that should intrigue us the most, as it opens up a couple of doors, both related to new ways of achieving, quote unquote, infinite portable lights. The vases we craft can hold all sorts of flowers, but in the end, everything will die, so it's the land Lamps, a time to shine, I feel. Now, by literal definition, these things are not even close to infinite lights. However, they last up to eight days, are easily refuelable via light bulbs, are extremely portable, and throw out a really decent light source, so they're pretty darn close in my eyes. But is a lamp meta incoming? I don't know, but I do know that it's time for our second half of the content today, and it all starts with the end of the Celestial Champion, and yet another suspect offering to Wagstaff himself, follow through with it, and the Lunar Rifts will tear open space and time in five days as before, or just adjust some settings, and the same will be done in but one. You decide. Now, while these Rifts will take time to open fully, you do need to know that Wagstaff actually gets going immediately. His first new event will occur just four days after a Celestial Champion kill, before a Rift even opens actually, and these indicate the spawning of abandoned junk set pieces here. Set pieces that we'll typically offer some research notes to, but for now, they're kind of just for fun. Whatever the case, any subsequent Wagstaff events will start to occur every 4 to 15 days after the first, just depending on how many you have already rolled. However, I will say I definitely have been on the lower side of things, but be sure to follow the guy's direction no matter what. Usually, this leads right to the junk, but you might also run in the direction and then it's just going to be far away from his origin, or it's going to be off the beaten path, which will have you run right past the crap sometimes. But hey, at least they do have map markers, am I right? In any event though, the junk we find will be hammerable, dropping cut stone, electrical doodads, frazzled wires, shattering teeth even, scrap, and blueprints, so let's discuss all that, yes? The new scrap will go into new upcoming crafts, of course, however note that they also help repair broken clockworks down in the ruins for extra loot, and you need friendly followers, all the while continuing to act like gears for any and all WX78 players out there. The two Warbiz armors, though, that have a 20% chance to be found as blueprints, continue this fun, if you've got the enlightened shards to craft them, that is, and come with unique systems like target locking. Hit anything, and the helmet will lock on, starting a timer until fully leveled up, which takes about 30 seconds to accomplish. In that time, the headgear will increase our damage up to 20% overall, all the while providing some decent defense itself at the end of the day. But pair it with the chest armor though, and it too will level up, but this time we can anticipate a building speed boost instead, which will reach up to 30% overall, which is crazy. 
It sneaks off with two final notes. Stray too far from your target, and you will lose the lock-on, meaning you will have to wait out that full 30 seconds again for any of the benefits. And lastly, if you wear the helmet to level 4, but not the armor, you will have to wait for said armor to actually sync up with the helmet if and when you do eventually put it on. Now, it's not anything crazy, but it is something to consider, so maybe just wear both all the time, as why not, right? They don't actually break, and can be repaired via the third blueprint to drop from the junk, the auto mat -Ocanic. Enjoy. As there you have everyone, the newly introduced Wagstaff and Pearl quests and everything they both entail. But old up, Beard, why would you include the gramophone in the thumbnail and in the intro and outro here if you weren't even going to talk about the damn thing? Well, because I literally forgot to film anything for it, and I am too lazy to correct that in the scripting process, so note that it will tend to plant for us, and how a clean sweeper actually changes the records we can make for it, so we actually only need one record. Got it? Good. As I do want to end the day by saying a couple things about our old couple here. The Wagstaff events should absolutely be easier to navigate to find the set pieces. The junk in the set pieces should be way more consistent with the drops because while this video shows like it's really easy, this is many, many days between all this. The Warpus armor itself needs buffs for how late game it is, and the Sawhorse itself should not be locked behind Ruins Nonsense. While I maybe just proved that it should be locked behind something, as if you give us that lamp early enough, we are absolutely going to abuse it. As things stand now, it makes absolutely zero sense that any of these crafts should be literally end game level crafts. But thanks for watching, folks. Well, wish it to all. Let me know your thoughts on it all. I'll keep you posted on any update to the update as I get the feeling one is very likely. And I'll see you when that hits. Bye bye.